Let's go potter. Okay. Okay. Hold it. Hold it. Vi var ikke utro, da. Vi var ikke det. Vi var ikke det. Nei. Welcome back to another episode of What We Talk About, where I squat here and chat about some of the movie that I recently watched and loved. And today we're talking about this Norwegian indie film, The Worst Person in the World. This is the first movie I saw this year, and that set the bar for my movie viewing this year really, really high. It was just so touching and is the most realistic on-screen portrayal of human experience. This film followed Julie, a woman in her late 20s trying to figure out her life. You kind of get a pretty good sense of the unpredictability or the uncertainty that Julie has as a character in the first five minutes. She switches majors, jump around from man to man. Her life is just kind of all over the place. <laughs> It is told in 12 chapter with an epilogue and a prologue and I think the funny thing is the epilogue of that story feels like the end of a rom-com already. It was five minutes and two people met going to the relationship. On, on the contrary, the epilogue feels like the start of Julie's life and nobody, not even Julie herself, know how it will pan out. And that's what I love the most about in the storytelling. First off, gonna get it out of the way, we need to talk about the cinematography, which I absolutely love. If I were to describe the camera work in one word, I know it's gonna sound oxymoron, but it so intentfully casual. The camera work is discernibly shaky sometimes. It fuses with the main character's emotion and matches Juliet's state of mind so well. And there are also shifts in focus that leads you from the inner world of the characters to the outer world they experience, the beautiful city in Oslo and the people in it, combined with the color grading that's just purely satisfying. There was one of my favorite scenes where you just follow Julie staring out in the ocean where the sun is slowly rising and we just kind of see the subtle change in lighting second by second. That was my favorite scene. On the other hand, the storytelling is very well paced, seamless, and so much fun. Like I said, it was broken out by chapter and it's so cohesive and each one has a title that keeps you really curious about what's happening. If you've seen how I made my vlog, you know that this is one of my favorite way to tell a story. I love structure, I like chapters. <laughs> what can I say? I think comparing to Wes Anderson's The French Dispatch, which also used the chapter marker storytelling technique, I feel like this one does it so much better. Also, if you want to check out my review for The French Dispatch, the link is there. And lastly, the creativity of this script is just wild. The scene where Julie just paused the time with a light switch so that she can run across the city to meet the guy. That materialized a fantasy that probably was wildly experienced by so many of us, but rarely admitted by any. And these surreal approaches used to describe Julie's dream, Julie's shroom experience. It is just so creative and relatable. The narrative is so humorous to the point and interactive, so it keeps the audience engaged at all time and create a depth in storytelling. Julie lurte på når livet egentlig skulle begynne. Oslo var med ett en helt annen by. I think the magic of this film comes from the non-judgmental empathy that flows through the direction, the acting, and the storytelling. Basically what we experienced with Julie is kind of like what Julie experienced herself. The performance of Renata is awarded Best Actress at some award that I cannot quite remember. When I heard her talking about this in her interview, I think it made more sense why the acting was so extraordinary. Like, I loved the situations and the script, and I also love that you, I didn't know who she was. She's like an enigma. She herself had so many questions about Julie as a character. She didn't know where she's going. She didn't know why she acted the way she acted. She was just there with Julie, racking her brain to try to understand who she is. And I think that's where the most nuanced, visceral human experience came from. <laughs> Yeah, I love you, but I don't like it. 
the unjudgmental mentality also comes from how the script was written. Every single character is just a collection of details and reaction and human interaction they have with one another and nothing more than that. Is this decision right? Is this decision wrong? Is this person a bad person? A good person? This is a script with a lot of good questions but no answers. Joachim is... he doesn't have any answers to anything in his script either. It's just questions and conversations about um, what love should be or what life should be or the like why does relationship get so messy and uh, why do we make the same mistakes and why is it so hard to choose anything you you think you know what what you're going through and going to go through but it's it's never what you think it is is it it's just it's a mess <laughs> <laughs> and i've surrendered it's uh, chaos all the way and i think it's never going to stop and that's that's very liberating with this movie it's you're gonna make a fool of yourself and do the wrong thing and make the wrong choices but it's okay that's that's what julie teaches us wouldn't we never know because that's essentially what life is right till you're on the deathbed to make a verdict on whether you regret something we never know for sure whether we had made the right decisions it's a false statement to make the right choice because you never really know what you're choosing before you choose it and frankly the concept of the right decision is so evanescent. Julie did what she was most compelled to do at every moment, even knowing that she will regret it later and feel pain. It was so clear to me that whatever she was feeling wasn't entirely about the other person she was talking about, but more about herself. You hear her defensiveness, her illogical responses, her overwhelming emotions that were often triggered by not what she was dealing with at the moment, but a culmination of what has been on her mind. I don't know if others will find her decision relatable, but I do 100%. Liksom vad du är färdig med att göra då? Känner du vad du, vad du ödelägger då? Ja, självklart. In her two romantic relationship highlighted in the movie, for me goes to show that in love and relationship there is no right decision. It would always feel messy and wrong, and you might feel like the worst person, but in the end, it's all about overcoming the decision paralysis and not being afraid to keep on making decisions and dealing with the consequences. And at one point, no matter how tempting it is to keep your option open or keep certain doors ajar, we need to stick to some of our choices and commit to it, even when things get hard. That were my two cents after watching the film. I feel very passionately about this one. Didn't think I did it justice. This is the third one of the Oslo trilogy, so I wanted to see the first two, and I'm definitely, definitely gonna watch it again. If you enjoy Lady Bird, Frances Ha, 20th Century Woman, I think this would be right up your alley. I hope you are having a good day and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed and happy movie viewing. Bye.